Greetings my friends and welcome back. Today we're going to make a monochromatic cane. So you'll just need one color, black and white. I use two packages of each because I like to have plenty of cane to experiment with and you may like to do that too. And also I want to remind you I have complete courses available and they're on uh, Curious.com. My channel is called Polymer Clay Date with Pandora and I teach on Art Jewelry Adventure and Polymer Clay Adventure. So I'm going to leave links there below for you because you know you may want to take those courses and they're really not very costly. So I hope you'll enjoy that. In the meantime, here's another free video for you and let's begin. So we're going to make a monochrome cane and I'm using this uh, Primo Peacock and some white and black. And so you know of course monochrome means one color and that's the only color that, that we'll be using. So I put this together to make myself a nice Skinner blend and I've intentionally offset these corners. So when I've lined these up I've pushed them off to one side and cut off the little tags. And that's just to make sure that I have remaining this color and this color on my final blend. I took my uh, Skinner blended strip. It was 24 inches long in the end and I cut it into eight three inch pieces and I made this little stack. I can do a lot with these in this form and that's why I do them that way sometimes. Of course you could roll it into a jelly roll or you could make a fan fold. And we're going to be doing that with this blend. So you're going to see that too. And I, uh, after making my blends I've got these left and I made some thin sheets of them. All the colors. Uh, the black and white are on a number six. This is a five. And I always keep the black and white a little thinner because it can really eat up your design. A big hunk of black or white can really be dramatic if it's supposed to be a focal point. But if you throw it into divide clay to make uh, lines, sometimes it's too much. So I keep the black and white as thin as I can handle them comfortably. I don't usually go under a six because it's just too much of a pain. I'm just going to bend it. And I know that this is eventually going to be a triangle. But I think you've seen my videos before, and I start everything out to be or to be round or square or rectangular, because I think it looks better when I make it into a triangle later, if it's kind of got um, more movement and dimension. Okay, I'm going to take this white piece, turned out a little bit short, and I'm going to throw this one in there. And the reason I'm not concerned with maintaining that one white piece is because, uh, as I said before, the white can really eat up your design. And so I'm going to add a thin piece at the bottom so that this doesn't make too much of a statement with the white. Okay. The other one's going to be simple jelly roll. And I'll put the light part on the inside of this one. Um, you know, I like it on the outside sometimes depending on what the wrap's going to be. But you know, the feeling... Uh, of the light shining out of the canes. It's something everybody really likes. And you get that kind of light feeling from the light clay being on the inside and it kind of looks radiant out outward like a you know light bulb. So that's why I usually put the light part on the inside of a jelly roll but you don't have to and it's a really fun to experiment with it. So again we're still working in three inch increments. You know even these. Okay. And that way I know what I've got I know what I'm going to do with it. I know where they're going to fit when the time comes. I'm going to open this and I'm going to drop this line in here. Okay, so so far I just have this little thing, and I'm going to set it aside because I have other stuff to make. So these are fairly simple components today. And you remember we have this. And I want to put these together in a way that's different from this. And yeah, we're going to combine them, we're going to change them up and do all kinds of crazy stuff, but I really want there to be interest here. So I'm going to cut this in half also. And I'm going to see what can I do to break this up now. You know, breaking them up is a big deal. Uh, you know, a lot of canes I see online really would have been good. And people ask me, you know, well, how can I improve? What can I do? You know, I'm not picking them apart. They're saying, this is not the effect I wanted, or how can I get this effect or that? 
one of the best effects that you can do is just to break your design up. This little line is going to really matter in this design. And you're going to see that over and over again. When you have a big gob of something someplace, your eye just goes to that big gob. So as time goes by, you want to be thinking of ways to add interest, you know, to your canes, okay? Now I'm not going to bend this one the same way, because I want it to look different from the other one. And as I said, I want to add interest to it. So into this one I'm going to drop some blue. I'm going to do that by notching a little bit out of it. So, you know, the way you use your clay is not chipped in granite. You know, just because we made a line in the last one doesn't mean we have to do it the same way in this one. And believe me, you know, I'm not probably not going to ever do anything the same way twice. That would be boring, and we don't want that. And that's where these come in. So I'm going to make some triangular material and I'm going to drop the triangles down into there. So I made these little triangles. Uh, that's got kind of a wide end on it. Let's make that symmetrical. Well, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to stick the point of it down into that uh, channel that I cut, that little notch. I'm going to do the same on this side. So, you know, you can see as you're going along how you're making your decisions about how you want your cane to look. And, you know, as we talked about, I always want mine to have a lot of curve to it. So when I stick those points down in there and then bend them down to one side, that's establishing more curve for me. I really want that in my, in my cane, okay? It's going to leave me with a bit of a space here. And I know what I'm going to put in that space because, you know, we've got all this stuff laying around. And I'm going to put this in here. It's going to look really cool. But before I do that, I'm going to put a wrap in there again to, to make a line. So I've created this shape here now. And I want to put this piece in here. And now we have a thing that looks like, like this. And it's just getting more interesting. It's just gaining character. You know, we're going to change it up a lot because, you know, i got to Pandorify the crud out of everything. But at least we've got some pieces that are interesting to us. So I reduced this down until it was just about the right uh, scale for this top. And I like it like that. Um, I'm a little bit concerned with this black on black here. I don't really want to overdo it. So I'm adding this white line here and here because I just want to divide this black from this black. And you know, all these little details I'm showing you because, you know, that's just what pleases my eye. But, you know, the whole point of this is that it pleases your eye. So, you know, I guess, you know, maybe I'm just making excuses because it's too hard to show... Uh, every bit of intent in a cane in a video. But what I'm saying is, as you go along, you're going to be looking right at your work. You're going to be looking at the size and the ratio of color and the scale of one thing to another. And you're going to see what you need to do. So I'm explaining to you that I'm doing that, but that you wouldn't even really have to do it that way. You really never have to do it the way I do it. So here's what we have so far, and I really like it, uh, but I want to break up this one flat line. I know I'm never going to be happy with that uh, the way it is now. So I'm going to add some detail down into here by reducing the other half of this cane and sticking it down in here uh, with some triangular fill made of this. So I've squeezed these together, uh, taken the two bullseyes that I made and put them on either side of my triangle material I had before. And then just squeezed them up into a triangle. And that's the Pandorification thing. You know, I know it sounds presumptuous to have named it, 
but um, I'd rather make things in general shapes like circles and squares and triangles and then change them into the shape I need than building them the shape that I need because I like the flexibility as I go along to make them bigger and smaller and to fit them into spaces that they look better in than my drawing did or than my idea did and that you know that happens a lot. So now all I've got to do is make a channel for this and I'm going to do that with this piece of wood. I, and this is just a piece of dowel I got at the hardware store and uh, it just helps me with these kind of shapes. So I'm going to establish that that divot and go a little bit slow. Um, you're going to have some squeeze out to the sides because changing your cane shapes as much as I do uh, does cause a lot of of uh, scrap clay. But you know, I, I made your video about about making the toshes and stuff and you know, scrap clay can be really really pretty in lots of different ways. So, don't feel too bad about that if it's going to achieve the effect that you want it to have. So, I'm forced that into the bottom and maintaining the shape that I want to have. It's looking good. I like it. Don't forget we still have this stuff. You know, if you wanted to add to it one more time, you could. It might be really pretty around the edge. Do you like that? We can throw it in there. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I want to maintain the curve of it, though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it uh, help me out. I'm going to extend it along the edge and bring it up over and tuck it into that little channel there. So I'm going to cut this so you can really see it. But normally we wouldn't need to cut it right now because, honestly, it's kind of a waste of cane knowing that we're going to reduce this. Uh, this end would just, you know, not need to be cut off right now. But I'd like to show it to you so you can see where we're at. So there it is. I'm going to reduce this and uh, recombine it and we'll start working with this cane. So you're going to end up with material that's like this. And uh, you've got a triangular cane. You can reduce it as much as you want to. You can see it's much smaller here. And not only is it much smaller, but I've taken some of that cane it was this size, probably about twice this length. And I cut it in half when it was still a triangle. And I put these together and formed it into a square. So that's how I ended up with this. And as you can see, um, you may want hexagons or round things. And you may want to end up with things that are square. So you get yourself a lot of opportunities to change it if you can change the shape of the cane itself. And I'll uh, put a link on there for you so you can see how to do that. It's not at all hard. But thank you so much for watching today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please uh, drop me a line if you want to see something in particular. And come see me at Curious.com and Polymer Clay Adventure and Art Jewelry Adventure. Bye-bye.